here we have um, targets one through three homework. So going through this just a little bit quicker than we did our notes. On target one, determining if we have a function or not, um, we're going to be making sure that each input has exactly one output. So on number one, what I'm really focused on is if there's a repeated x value. So I have 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And because I didn't see a repeated x value, that means that this is a function. Each input has exactly one output. Taking a look at number 2, 0, 5, 0, 12. So notice 0 made an appearance twice, and it has different outputs, outputs each time. So that means it is not a function. So now I'm just going to say function or not for the remaining questions. So we have a bunch of graphs here. So I'm really going to think about the vertical line test. Would it pass the vertical line test? So on 3, that would be a function. Each input has exactly one output. Again, just thinking about that vertical line test on um, number four also would pass the vertical line test. On number five, it would not pass the vertical line test. And I'm just giving an example of where it wouldn't pass. At this vertical line, it hit three times. So that is not a function. All right, so on number six, they kind of have these lines drawn in for you, and it looks like it fails the vertical line test. But because this is an open point and this is closed, it actually passes, and it is a function. So it's okay to have an open and a closed point at the same vertical line. So here, this would not pass because at that vertical line, there's two closed points. So this is not a function. Number eight. Just thinking about an example of a vertical line I could draw, this would be not a function. It touches that circle at two points. Number nine, it would pass the vertical line test, so this is a function. Number 10, again, looking at this x value, that vertical line, it's okay because you have an open and a closed. If they were both closed, that would not be okay. So here, at this vertical line, we have a closed and a closed, so this is not a function. Moving on to target two, where we're doing some evaluating. So remember, the number in parentheses is the value that we plug in. So I'm going to start by plugging in a negative 1, calculating that to be negative 9. A number 13. I'm going to plug in the value in parentheses, which is a 2. And I'm going to calculate this, so that would be 2 plus 10 minus 2, which would be 10. Now our piecewise function. So our first input value is 1. So 1 is not true here, but it is true there. So I'm looking at the inequality. So 1 is not less than 1, but it is greater than or equal to 1. So I'm going to plug it in to the second equation. When I do that, I get out negative 1. Our next input value is 6. So I'm going to see where it's true. So 6 is not less than 1. 6 is greater than or equal to 1. So I also plug that into the second equation. And it's OK to plug them both into the second equation. OK, new function we have an input value of negative 6. Negative 6 is not greater than 3. It's not in between negative 2 and 3. But negative 6 is less than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to plug it into this bottom equation. Negative 6 plus 3. And then I'm going to um, calculate that. That gives me negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. So I think that gives me negative 6 when I calculate it. And then another input value here of negative 2. So negative 2 is not greater than 3. Negative 2 is in between negative 2 or 3 or equal to. And negative 2 is not less than negative 2. So I'm going to focus in on that second equation, which just has a value of 2. There's no input there. So I don't need to worry about inputting my values, just whatever that value is. 
Okay, so on these we are going to um, find the correct function and then plug in our x value. So f of negative 6, here's the f function. So plugging in a negative 6, I get out negative 11. On number 17, j of 4, so here's the j function. Here's the x value of 4. It hits our function right there. That y value is negative 7 m of negative 1. So here's the m function. When x is negative 1, the output is 10. k of 2. So looking at the k function, when the x value is 2, the y value is negative 4. g of negative 8. So here's the g function. I'm going to plug in a negative 8 for x. And that gives me negative 7. And then h of 8, so here's the h function. Here's the x value of 8. It hits our curve right here. That y value is 0. And continuing with that same thought process of graphs, we're going to use that again when it comes to piecewise function graphs. So h of negative, or sorry, f of negative 2. Here's negative 2. It hits our curve here at the x, sorry, at the y value of negative 2. f of 5. Here's the x value of 5. We're looking up here. y value is 7. g of negative 4. So this is that tricky one. you got to remember which point to choose. We do not choose the open point. We always choose the closed point. That y value is 3. And then g of negative 3. So here's negative 3, real close there. Hits our function here. That y value is negative 6. And then our last target, identifying linear absolute value or um, quadratic functions from graphs, equations, and tables. So this first one, pretty basic. That's a linear function, I know, because it is a line. On 25, quadratic. It's a U-shape. Now from an equation. On number 26, I see an x squared. Anytime you see an x squared, that means you're dealing with a quadratic function. On 27, this is in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b which means it's a linear function. And now we have a table. So I'm going to calculate to go from negative 4 to negative 2.5. That means I am adding, I believe, negative 4 to negative 3. So I'm doing plus 1.75. And then here I'm also doing 1.75. Is that right? Did I calculate that right? Negative. Oh, wait, here I'm doing uh, positive um, 1.25. And then here I'm doing positive 0.75. So this isn't a constant rate of change, so this has to be a quadratic. And then over here we're doing negative 20, but then we go to positive 20, and it keeps going positive 20, so it looks like it's a constant rate of change, but we have some positive, some negative, so this is absolute value. And that is your homework for targets 1 through 3. I think we're finished. Yep.